Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to the Roswell Church of Christ. Welcome to our worship today. God is working and He is moving. We've got a great worship in store for you. So we just want to thank each and every one of you for being here. We've got a lot of announcements that we're going to have to get to at the end, but I'm going to give you just a few of them this morning. We've got the women's prayer breakfast next Saturday from 8 to 10. Women's prayer breakfast next Saturday from 8 to 10. Uh, you need to register for that. Uh, we've got a brothers meeting on next Saturday as well. We'll give you that location. We'll give you that location. We'll give you that location. We've got a marriage, a, a, a workshop coming up in February. We get planning an evangelism workshop uh, coming up. So we've got a lot of good stuff that we're planning for you. And so there's other announcements that are coming as well. So we're going to get ready to worship. So here's what I want everybody to do. I want to do a little bit, little bit different before our song leader comes up. I want everybody on the camera and everybody at home, just take a minute to center yourself. Just take a minute just to, just to pray your prayer that God clears your heart and clears your mind. Just take a minute that, because, you know, sometimes we rush into church and, 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 and we've rushed from home and breakfast was burnt and toast didn't taste right and bacon was too salty and, you know, but let us just ask God to come into our space. Just clear our hearts that we can lift up the best prayers, the best singing, bring the best message. Let us just take a minute. 30 seconds to do that, just to focus our hearts and center in. And our song leader, he's already on his way of becoming up. Amen. And we'll do it just a little bit different because we get so used to doing the same thing. I remember we were a three-song scripture reading and prayer. Y'all remember those days? Mm. What I'm going to do before the song leader comes up, I'm going to put Donnie on the spot. I don't want to do that. Just come up, right? Just grab a mic, man, and just pray, our, just pray us up. Just come up and just pray that God just moves and, and just pray us up that God lifts us and lifts our worship. And then right after him, we'll go on with our regular, with our, with our, with our regular worship. Brother Donnie. Let us bow. <clears throat> dear Heavenly Gracious Father, we come to you this morning, dear Lord, with humble hearts, dear Lord. Let us take something that we hear today and apply it to our lives, dear Lord. We all need you, dear Lord. Be with us and guide us, dear Lord. Give us the wisdom to know when to speak. Give us the wisdom to know when to listen and be quiet. Sometimes, dear Lord, <clears throat> we don't know what to say. Sometimes it's just a hug. Be with our youth that they make good decisions, that they can be great adults, dear Lord. These blessings, in your almighty name, amen. Amen. Your grace and mercy brought me through. I'm living this moment. Because of you, and I want to thank you and praise you to your grace and mercy brought me through your. And mercy, love, brought me through. I'm living this moment, this moment, love, because of you. And I want to pay. Brought me through. 
I'm living this moment, this moment of because of you. And I want to thank you and praise you to your grace and mercy. Verses 15 through 16. Again, that is Hebrews chapter 13, verses 15 through 16. And it reads, Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God the uh -huh. sacrifice of praise, yes, Lord. the fruit of the lips that openly profess his name, and do not forget to do good and share with others for which this sacrifice is God is pleased. Over the COVID times, um, I don't know if you guys remember, but we had to come up with alternate church services. So uh, during those alternate church services, I would go down to my grandfather's house and uh, we would all sit in the front room and we would all uh, come together and Papa would bring us a scripture and he would preach for us basically. And we would all just sit there and learn. Reading this scripture, it, it lets us know that we have to come together in times. You know, the people, we are the church, not the building. So that reminds me, when I was sitting in Papa's, Papa's, uh, Papa's little office thing, all of us together, that there, that was the church, you know, yeah. not the building. So as DJ comes up, let us pray. Yeah. Let us pray. Father, we have you thankful this day, thankful in this scene of the day. Please pray that this worship service may be good in your eyes. And just thank you for everybody that came to church today. And so it's now pray. Amen. Jesus 
she died upon the cross. Yes, and I know it was a blood for me. Oh, yes, I know it was a blood. That blood, I know it was a blood. Yes, I know it was a blood for me. Upon the cross, well, and I know it was a blood for me. Well, they pissed him in the side. They pissed, they pissed him in the side. Oh, Lord, they pissed him in the side. For me, Lord, one day when I was lost, Jesus, he died upon the cross. Well, and I know it was the blood of all. Sun refused to shine. Well, the sun refused to shine. Oh, the sun refused to shine. Just for me. Oh, one day when I was lost, Jesus, he died upon the cross. Yes, and I know it was a blood for me. Oh, he hung his head and died. Yes, he hung his head and died. Lord, I hung his head and died for me. Upon the cross, well, and I know it was a blood for me. Oh, yeah, I know it was a blood. I know, I know it was. Lord, I know, I know it was a blood. For me, oh, one day, I Jesus, she died upon the cross. Well, and I know it was a blood for me. Amen. We've come to the part of our service where we take the communion, also known as the Lord's Supper. At this time, uh, everyone should have a communion kit. If you do not have one, if you wish to take the Lord's Supper, uh, raise your hand. and We'll have the ushers come and take care of you. The communion is not just some ritual that we go through, but is this part of our service it was instituted by the Lord himself. It is called the communion because when we take of the communion, we come together in fellowship not only with one another, but we spiritually fellowship with the Lord himself. It's also called the Lord's Supper. And the reason it's called the Lord's Supper, or on the day in which it was instituted, 
Lord Jesus, he came together with his disciples to eat the Passover meal. And at that meal, uh, he took bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and told them all to eat it for it represented his broken body. And in the same manner, after he had finished eating, he took the cup which contained the fruit of the vine and he blessed it also. And he gave it to them and told all of them to drink of it for it represented the covenant of the, his, his blood which was shed for many for the remission of sins. We find this in the book of Matthew 26 chapter verse 26, starting with verse 26. And then when we look at uh, the Lord's Supper, we want to make sure that we're taking it in the way in which it was prescribed for us. So we know that it was taken upon the first day of the week, according to Acts 20 and 7. So we, as New Testament Christians, ought to follow that pattern, taking it upon the first day of every week. And then when we look at the manner in which we take of this, this is a memorial service. And we are reminded uh, by the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 11, he talks about when you take the Lord's Supper, you take it uh, and you should be focused on the Lord himself, on his death, burial, and his resurrection. For if you don't take it in a worthy manner, you take it and you bring uh, condemnation upon yourself. So we want to make sure when we are taking the Lord's Supper that we are, uh, we're focused on the Lord who gave his blood, who went to the cross, a man who never sinned, yet he was willing to give his life for those who have sinned and we continue to sin, but because of the cross, we have the right for the, our sins to be remissed. So we want to thank the Lord. So before we take the Lord's Supper, we want to just go to the Lord and thank him for his blood and uh, his broken body. Let us pray. Father God, we can never say thanks enough for what the Lord Jesus did for us. We thank you for sending your son. We know that we were hopeless. We with, had no hope of, because of sin, of ever being able to be reconciled back to you. But because of your son, because of his loving mercy and grace, Father, we all have an opportunity to eternal life. So we just want to say thank you. And we ask a blessing upon the bread and upon the cup. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now take the communion. He's sweet, I know. Oh, and he sweet, I know. You know the storm clouds may rise and the strong wind.
now come to another part of our worship service. This is for the offering, or the giving, and this is too is also an act of worship. We find that uh, the Christians were commanded to give as in uh, 1 Corinthians 16 and 1 and 2 as God has prospered us. Each and every one of us, all that we have, it comes from God. And God is not asking you to give it all back. He's just asking you to give just a small portion of what he has given us. So when we look at the giving, we have to remember that we, we, we're giving back just something that God has given us. God has been gracious to us, and in our giving, we can be gracious to others. And when you give, just remember, as in the manner in which you give, if you give bountifully, you shall reap bountifully. If you give sparingly, you will reap sparingly. And we also want you to know that we are not forcing anybody to give. The Bible teaches that you don't need to give begrudgingly of, or of necessity. But one thing about it is when you give, God knows what you're giving, and God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. At this time, uh, if you have an offering and you're here, raise your hand. We have various ways in which we can give. Of course, we can always give here in person. You can use the PushPay app at www.pushpay.com. Or you can use the Cash app. And the hashtag is dollar sign R-C-C-H-R-I-S-T. You can give by cell phone. You can text R-C-O-C to 77977. And we have the communion offering and prayer drive through on the first Saturday of the month. You can also give in that manner. Now we have one of the brothers who's going to pray for the offering. Amen. Good morning. We'll dismiss at this time for children's worship. So children ages 5 through 12, meet us in the back and we'll head down. Thank you all. Thank God. Just a little talk with Jesus. Yeah. <clears throat> I have a little thing. <clears throat> I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. And then a little light from heaven filled my soul. It made my heart in love.
For some time my path seemed drear Without a ray of cheer And then clouds doubt may hide the light of day You know the mist of sin may rise And hide the starry skies But just a little talk with Jesus clears away Seven, no, not one. No, not one. The best part about this song is it's so true. There's not a friend like Jesus. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. Singing out, no, not one. No. Singing now. 
No, not one singing in. No, not one. Let me tell you that Jesus knows all about our troubles, and He will guide till the day. No, not one, no, not one, there's not an hour that he is not near us, singing it, no, But his love can cheer us, singing it, no, not one, singing it, no, not one. Let me tell you that Jesus knows all about our troubles. He comes 47 when the morning comes trials dark on every hand and we cannot understand and the way that God will lead us to the blessed promised land but he'll guide us with his eye and we'll follow till we die. We will understand it better by and by. Sing by and by. Lord, when the morning comes, you know all the saints of God. We will understand it better by and by, singing by and by, Lord, when the morning comes, you know all the saints of God were gathering home, and we will Tell the story how we overcome. We will understand it better by and by. We are often destitute of the things that life demands. One of shelter and of food, thirsty hills and barren lands. But we're trusting in the Lord and according to his word, we will understand it better by and by singing by and by Lord when the morning comes 
me you know all the saints of God are gathering home and we will tell the story how we overcome we will understand it better by and by temptations hidden snares often take us unawares and our hearts are made to bleed for each thoughtless word or deed and we wonder why the test when we try to do our best we will understand it better by and by singing by and by Lord open the morning comes you know all the saints of God were gathering home and we will tell the story how we overcome we will understand it better by and by singing by and by Lord when the morning comes you know By and by. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. Do another one. Let's keep singing to the Lord. We'll do 273. Come on. 273. <clears throat> there is a name I love to hear. I love to sing his word. Earth is sound like music. My ear, it's the sweetest name on earth, and oh, how I love Jesus, oh, do you love Jesus? How I Who died to set me free? It tells me of his precious blood, the sinner's perfect plea. And oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, I... 
He's brought us from a mighty long way. Somebody ought to offer him some praise this morning if he has brought you from a mighty long way. So good to see each and every one of you here today. So many visitors from various places. We've got Hugh Mike here. Hugh Mike, Stan Addison's brother. Stand up. Stan Addison's oldest brother. Bless you. One of his old, older brothers. Bless you. Bless you. Hugh Mike. Hugh Mike. He Mike told me right before I came in, he Mike said that uh, he'd been fighting some cancer. And the doctor said that his cancer has been reduced by 20%. Well, oh, you got to give God some praise. God is good all the time. I'll preach in a minute. God is good. Bless you. We've been praying for you. God is good. God is good. Praying for Brother Darnell. God will lift him up, God will continue to heal him, and that God will, he's watching today, and that God will bring him back, God will restore him, and, and he, 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 with that surgery, and I heard him singing on, y'all sent the video of him singing, and he's trying to get back, but he wanted to be here, I know he did, but pray for him. God is good. Good to see Willie Jackson and his wife, all the way from Swope Parkway. God is good. Brother Jimmy Marshall, good to see you still standing, young man. Good to see you still on God's battlefield. I know Willie Jackson taught you the gospel, and I know that uh, we know you lost your wife a time ago, but God is holding you up. God is still holding you up. I'll preach in a minute. 
If you'll join me in Genesis chapter 12, we will consider, continue to talk about surrendering. Oh, but it was a song in my spirit. No, I don't think I'm going to do that. I may. No. Lord Jesus. It's one of them you got to know, Carlton. I'm going to tell you the words to it. I heard the church in Texas sing it. You've heard it. Bow down before the Lord. Bow down. You might sing it another time. Bow down before the Lord and worship him. Oh, worship him. Oh, enter him. Yeah. Yeah, I would try it. But. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Oh, enter in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Bow down before the Lord, worship Him. Come on, y'all help me. Real, oh, worship Stand to your feet. Sing that again. Oh, Lord, bow down before the Lord. You got to take it. You got to take it. Lord, yeah, yeah. Oh, enter in. Bow down, bow down. Yeah. Before the Lord. Yeah, worship song. Worship me. Come on, church. Yes, sir. Oh, worship me. Bow down, bow down.
Consuming fire. Come on, yeah. Sweet perfume. Yeah. Your awesome presence fills this room. Yeah. This is holy ground. My friends, we all need some help if you're going to be obedient to God. You all need some help. Meet me in Genesis 12, and you're going to find a man by the name of Abram mm-hmm. who needed some help from God. Abram was kind of early in his ministry. He ain't became Abraham yet. I'll read the text in a minute. But, but, but he needed some help to go to the next level with God. He needed somebody to come alongside of him. He needed to listen to greater directions than his own self. And so many times as men, so many times in our lives, if we're not careful, we will listen to our own voices in our own head and we will stay average. But until we listen to God, we won't go to the next level. I'm reminded of a basketball story. Never forget when LeBron, they lost their first championship at Cleveland. They lost in the playoffs. LeBron knew he had to make some changes. He knew his jumper tray wasn't as good as it needed to be. I'm not saying you're on A, but he knew that his jumper, as young folks say, it wasn't as wet as it needed to be. And he knew that he could get to the rack, but he knew that his problem is that he could not post. Who you, LeBron, you 6'8", you ought to be able to post anybody up. The first call they say that LeBron made because he knew he needed help for his post game is uh, Brother George, he called Akeem Olajuwon. He paid the money, Donnie. He went and spent a couple of days with Akeem Olajuwon, who is, who is one of the greatest, I know we're going to say, in this era, Wilt, and I know you're going to argue with me, and Bill, but, but, and Kareem. But, but in his era, in his day, we know that Akeem Olajuwon got it done in the post. He spent time because he needed coaching. He spent time and he learned the moves that Akeem Olajuwon had. Why? Because he wanted to get better. Why? Because he knew he didn't have it all together. My friends, today as I read this text, I want you to read this on the backdrop that you got to get better, that I've got to get better, that as we as a group, if we're going to do the evangelism work we got to do, we got to surrender. If we're going to do great women's programs and great teens programs, we've got to get better. And we need somebody to come alongside of us to help us better, to help us get better. Now the Lord said to Abram, Get out of your country, from your family, from your father's house, to a land that I will show you, and I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing, and I will bless those who bless you. Now I will curse those who curse you. And in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. If you need a subject title today, we've been talking about surrender, my friends. Surrender requires obedience. Put that in your notes. If you're ever going to be great, if you're ever going to go to the next level spiritually, if you're ever going to go to the next level and whatever you're trying to do, it's going to take obedience. It's going to take you denying yourself, you getting out of your own way, you stand up late doing the work you got to do, my friends, to be great, to be great. You got to do the small stuff consistently day in and day out. 
And while I'm in this neighborhood, one of the greatest things you're going to learn, if you're ever going to be successful at these two or three things, you've got to learn to say no to these three or four things. Abraham was at the beginning of his ministry. God, he was on the cusp of God calling him to greatness. My friends, God will ask him to move, to step out on faith, to follow him through obedience. Our problem is, Brother George, we don't want to be obedient. Our problem is, Elder Stan, we want to do it. It's our thing, and we want to keep doing it the way we're doing it. Well, baby, keep on doing what you've been doing, because if you keep on doing what you've been doing, let me just help you out with a little bit of psychology. You're going to keep on getting what you've been getting. Somebody ought to say amen right there. Somebody said that's the definition of insanity, to keep on doing what you've been doing and expecting different results. I almost could close right there. <laughs> Point one today, to fully experience God, you must surrender. Look at what God says now. And then we, we meet up with Abraham. This is Abram. This ain't Abraham yet. God ain't changed his name yet. God, God ain't asked him. As I, as, and because I fought this text, I was going to come with the, in Genesis 22, when God asked Abram to Abraham at that point to crucify, put his, to kill his son Isaac. But I couldn't start right there. Because if you don't get this part, you're not going to understand that. God is asking him to do something basic, to step out on faith, to move from where you are. Check the text out. It takes fully surrender. Look at the text. He says, get out of your country. Wait a minute. You just didn't leave your country then? Do you know what God is asking him to do? You just didn't leave your, fami- your family? Look at what the text says. He says, step out on faith. Step out of your comfort zone. Some of us can't get to where God wants us because we're good here. We're comfortable. Oh, come here, somebody. We comfortably read our Bibles. Remember I said last week, and somebody was like, ooh, that'll preach. Remember I said we are spiritually institutionalized. And many of you are like, whoa. That means that we continue to do the same things over and over again. Listen to the same people. Thinking we're going to get different results. But just like LeBron, if you don't work on your game, Stay and I go to games and I see young guys play. Jumper as broke. Shooting it like this. Talking about I want to go to the league because they can jump and dunk. My friends, you got tons of people in the league who can jump and dunk. But until you understand the finer points of the game, you're going to struggle. You got to have the Jerry Jeter mentality he had in baseball. Every offseason, they worked on one thing, and he got better. My friends, we're going to get better organized at this church. We're going to continue to do evangelism work, but we're going to work harder to keep people. Yeah. Let me get ready to give you a couple more thoughts. Full surrender. Ooh, this first point messed me up. He said, I need you to leave your family. Family's good. Family's great, but your family can't go to heaven for you, but your family can sure keep you from getting there. Somebody ought to say amen. I'll close in a minute. I done said enough right there. I'm not anti, that ain't what I'm saying. I'm saying he tells Abram, who ain't become Abraham yet, because you and I know that we all got some family members. That after we done had the Thanksgiving meal or the Christmas meal, when the red cups come out, say amen when you can. Or we go out to, they go out to the garage or they go out to, we need to leave them alone, leave them out there. Say amen when you can. Come here, come here. He said leave family. Next one, he says leave your father's house. They grew up in communal systems. They stayed with family. They stayed with father. Why do you think in the, in the New Testament, he tells them, he said, you, he said, wives, you be obedient to your own, or wives, you listen to your own husband, because dad lived in the house, granddad lived in the house. He told wives to be submissive to your own husband, because they, uh, can I teach you, because they lived in community fashion. Come here, my friend, sometimes, see, God is calling you to his greatest influence. 
God is calling you to a greater influence where he can greatly improve your life. That's surrender. Nothing against the patriarchal influence. But God is calling you to deeper. God is calling you to greater. He's calling Abram. This year we're talking about surrendering to God. Not just any surrender, but full surrender. We'll leave it alone. Full surrender. Go back and look at the wins tonight. Full surrender. Full surrender requires we move out of the way and put God first. Matthew 6, where it says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these other things will be added to you. Next, full surrender requires, as it says in Matthew 16, 24, that we desire or want God in a deeper way. Psalms 42, 1, as the deer pants for water, so my soul Amen. desires. You got to want it. You got to put the work in. As we say in sports, Carlton, a lot of young folks I see today, they got big league dreams and little league work habits. <laughs> Let me say it again. <laughs> They got big league dreams and little league work habits. It's putting in the work with God. It's allowing God to take over first. You got to put God first. Next, you got to desire. Matthew 16, 24, if anyone desires to come after me, I'll get back to Abram in a minute. Desire, want. Want to. The eagerness for. Next, here's where it gets tough. He says, deny self. This is the hardest thing we're going to do. Stay married, grow a church, and deny self. Because until we move me out the way, until I move me out the way, don't you know that God is calling you to something greater that until Abram had to get out of God's way, Abram had to get out of his own way, he wasn't going to get to where God was trying to get him to. Remember, God promised him a son. Abram, in his own way, thought that he had a plan to fulfill the prophecy. No, Abraham, that's not what I'm telling you to do. Be obedient. Surrender requires obedience. Matthew 16, 24, if a man wants to serve God, he must deeply want and be on the same agenda. Matthew 16, 23 and 24, this is where it gets tough. We're commanded to deny ourselves. Let me spend a little time right there, and then I promise you I'll take my seat. Put you, your thoughts, your self-will, your thoughts about the life that you can do so much better with. It requires that you put the things away that are hurting others. If we're not careful, we'll do things that hurt others. Oh, come here, somebody. It'll preach in a minute. Some of us don't realize that your habits are hurting other people. Some of you don't realize that your habits, like Peter's habits, hurt other people. Look here what the text says. Look at what he says. Deny self. Deny self means to disown self. Means to disown yourself for the sake of Christ. Hardest thing you're going to do is get out of your own way. You might want to write that down. Where are my young people at? I know they're in the back. I know you got it all together. I know you think you're old, that, 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 you, that you know it all. But hey, we can still smell. We can, you, you still wet behind the ear. We still, you still got a towel behind your ear. We're trying to tell you stuff. We're trying to help you make better decisions. Why? Because we done done there, been there, and, and, and bought the T-shirt, and we're trying to help you see. And your breath still smell like breast milk. You think that's a shot of cause? No, that's because I love you. And I want better for you. Our young men are becoming so hooded out, thugged out. And our young women are in trouble because of social influences. 
They struggle with relationships. I'll be there in a minute. Please tell me, why come? Who's the girl? Megan the Stallion? The dude done shot her in the foot. Let me leave it alone. And you still, you think he's still? Come on. Make it plain. Come on. Surrendering to God. Abram had to surrender. Abram had to surrender. My final three things today. Surrender requires trust. Get out of your country. It's a blind trust. Where are you going? Man, sometimes you don't know where God is sending you, but you know he's sending you. He ain't sending you nowhere where it ain't spiritual. He's not sending you nowhere where, because you know if it's of God, if it's holy, if it's of the Holy Spirit. God is never sending you somewhere that's going to hurt you, harm you. Somebody ought to say amen right there. God is never going to send you a relationship because let me go back, go back, go back to the text. In the King James Version, verse, in the King James Version in Genesis 22, it says God tempted Abraham. God was testing Abraham. It's in 2020. It's in Genesis 22. He worked right here. Give me seven minutes, I'll put a bow on it. Put a bow on it. You don't believe me. Put me on the clock. Surrender requires trust. Donnie, you know the hardest thing for us as dudes? Because we alpha dogs. I said this Wednesday night. We alpha dogs, man. We used to run and stuff. The hardest thing for dudes, and we wonder why men don't want to go to church. Hardest thing for us, Mark, is to get out of God's way. And this is what Abram had to do. Look at the text. Let me give you three thoughts. Get out of your country, from your family, from your father's house to a land I'm going to show you. God is trying to get us to move from where we are in our unspiritual state. I know this ain't what you want to hear. To a greater spiritual calling with him. God is trying to get us literally to move from where we are. Abraham, where, Abraham, where are you okay is good. It's good. It's good. But it's not great. See, if LeBron had never made that decision to go and work with Akeem Olajuwon, it improved his game. That's what he needed at the time. God is trying to move you Amen. through surrender. Next, he says, obedience brings blessings. Obedience brings blessings. Verse 2, obedience brings, I'm going to send you to a land that I'm going to show you. I ain't going to tell you where you're going, but if I tell you everything, what you got to do to get there, you liable not to go. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Come here. He says, I'm going to make you a great nation. Look at the text. The text didn't say, you going to make you a great nation. Ooh, preach, Harris. Y'all got five more minutes? I've got five minutes left here. The text didn't say, Abraham, you follow me and you going to make you great. No, Abraham, you can't make you great. You can only make you, yeah, you will accomplish great stuff. But look at what he says. Look what he says. I will bless you and I will make you a great nation. I will make you better than you already are. I will make you new and improved. I will make you more than you already are. Why? Because you surrender to me. But you know, we're fearful because I'm afraid. Remember I told you last week, we're afraid to give this up because I really don't have a full plan to get over here to that. He says, I'll make you more impressive than you already are. With God, you will be super impressive. He said, well, God, I will make you more important than you are, but I need you to get out the way. I need you to follow me. I need you to fall in line. I need you to surrender to me. Yeah. And as guys, that's tough. Yeah. And then he says, I will make your name great. Well, if you're in it for name recognition... He said, I'm going to make your name great, Abram. 
Let me close. He says, you'll be a blessing. Ooh. Check him out in the text. This is it. At the end of verse 3, end of verse 2, he says, and you shall be a blessing. Mm -mm -mm. Don't you know when we have the courage to follow God that the blessings ain't just about us that he's going to send? Yeah. Yeah. The blessings he's sending to you is to bless other people. Your obedience is going to allow other people to come to faith in your family. Your obedience is going to allow other folk that's going to say, look, I'm going to follow the Lord because I see you follow the Lord. Your obedience will be a blessing to generations and generations to come. That's what he's saying. Your obedience will allow people to see the cause of Christ in you. Ooh. Don't you know our kids become... Ten times of who we are, good or bad. Oh, ain't going to be a lot of amens right here. It's going to get quiet. He says, I'm training you to be a blessing. I need you to surrender because they will become you on crack, steroids, meth. They will become you. Now, where do we end all this? Got to come back. You got to understand the life of Abel. Before he goes to Abraham, the mistakes he's going to make. But God is calling him out of darkness into the marvelous light. Today you get a chance to surrender, fully surrender. Today you get a chance to put Christ on in baptism. Today many of you are struggling with stuff. You're struggling with where do I go? How do I know that this is the voice of God talking? Well, let me tell you something. When you start to read your Bible and the Holy Spirit starts to work and you begin to get close, God is never going to call you to do nothing that's bad, negative, or bad to nobody else. Abe struggled with his call. Get out of your country. Go to somewhere where I'm calling you to go. He didn't ask him to. Genesis 22 moment. He didn't ask him to take Lot with him. But you see Abram surrendering. If you're here today, will you surrender? Yeah. I gave you eight minutes, ten minutes back on the sermon. Will you surrender? Come on. Will you fully get out of the way? Get over yourself? Get over your thinking? Get over your planning. Get over, here's one thing to get deep. Get over your manipulating. I read something in a book about men. It was the Samson, the Samson syndrome. Strong men struggle with pride. Strong men struggle with anger. Strong men struggle with lust. He's talking about all the bad boys in the Bible. But they're going to bless you. Strong men struggle with overestimating their own cleverness. Get the book and check it out. Oh, it'll preach in a minute, won't it? Strong men struggle with overestimating their own cleverness. What he's saying is, bro, you may have talked your way out this. Bro, you may have got your way out that. But if you don't surrender, those types of situations are going to keep any, any, any real dudes in here that know that when you was out there in them streets doing your thing, and as long as you kept on doing that stuff, them situations kept on coming back. Okay, y'all ain't going to get honest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That girl who scratched your keys. To her, your car on the side. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, it'll get deep in a minute. It'll, you get honest. Yeah, yeah, somebody come on. That brick that got through you through your windshield. I don't know nobody's business. I'm just telling you how they did it in the south. Somebody know what I'm talking about. Somebody in here gonna get honest in just a minute because strong men, you overestimate your own cleverness because you've not surrendered. Yeah. 
And I close with a sad story. Baltimore Ravens quarterback. You know him. Quarterback for the Tennessee Titans, one of the baddest brothers we knew. Could throw a tight spiral. Tough as all get out. Steve McNair. Steve McNair was one of the baddest dudes at quarterback would play hurt, play through pain from a little small HBCU. Made it to the NFL. But in the end, he would not let certain stuff go. Not here to badmouth his name. Would not let certain stuff go. And that became his ultimate demise. You hear today, God has called you to let some stuff go. To surrender. His tragic murder touched sports fans. His tragic murder made dudes in life group go in there and get honest. His tragic murder at the hands of a woman who wasn't even his wife. I'm not bad mouthing his name. No, no. I'm saying let's learn from Steve McNair. Oh, y'all forgot the story? Ended in tragedy. Wife at the house, he at the bachelor pad with the side, oh Lord Jesus. I'm just being real with you. I'm just being honest with you because until we surrender, because in, in a minute, in, a, in, a, in the next couple of weeks, I know I got a minute left. In the next week, we're going to talk about you got to surrender the deepest thing that keeps you from serving God. I'm just laying some groundwork. Is it your money? Is it your pride? Is it the side piece? Is it the hustle? Come on, somebody. Huh? See, we see this, we got to get on this church. You come today by hearing, maybe there's somebody who's trying to surrender and you need to give your life over to Christ. You come by hearing the gospel. Romans 10, 17, so then faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. What's the gospel? The gospel of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Some of you, God has delivered you. And you need to get baptized today, not just for the sake of being baptized, but you need to be baptized for remission of sin into the Lord's church so that he can continue to cover you, so that he can continue to bless you, so that you can start this path so you don't have to keep making bad decisions. Come by here and believe in Mark 16, 16. He that believeth and is baptized. It's a process. Surrender is a process. It's a process. Transformation is a process. Repent. Luke 13, 3. The hardest thing for us to do, Don, is get honest. Where are my real dudes at? Hardest thing. Anybody want to get honest today? The hardest thing for dudes is to get honest. Yeah, I appreciate one person raised their hand up. Two, three, to get on four, to get honest. And we're trying to bring a brand of Christianity that's real and relevant because until you get honest, you can't surrender. Yeah, come on. That's men and women. I'm done. Right. Yeah. Believe, repent, confess. Matthew 10, 32, as we confess that Jesus is the most important the name on mortal tongue. Then we're going to be baptized. Abram, before he could become Abraham, before he could make his name great, he had to surrender to God. And we don't want to do it. Hard. I know you said, man, you picked on the guys hard today. No, calling our attention because the family rests on us. Come on, say that. So if you're here today, we're going to stand and sing a hymn of invitation. Maybe there's somebody who needs to repent. Maybe there's somebody who needs, maybe there's somebody who, who, maybe there's somebody who needs to give their life to Christ. Man, why are you harping on surrender? Man, because, hey, we all know, if it, the real people in here know, until you surrender, your life can't be in a wreck. And watch this. Here's the worst thing about it. Have you ever been somewhere and you watching a train wreck happen in somebody's life? Anybody ever been there and that life is yours? And you say, man, if I keep going, that is a train wreck waiting to happen because we won't surrender, because we won't. We keep living for the flesh. Yes, yes, yes. Train wreck about to happen. I can avoid the train. 
So here we are today. This is where we get honest. This is where we get honest about what we need prayer for. This is where we get honest about our decision making. This is where we get honest about our families. This is where we get honest about surrender. Okay, I'll make it a little bit more palatable next week. Okay. About surrender. If you're here today, if you know you need to be baptized for remission of sins, if you know you need to come to the Lord's church, you know that the life you live in ain't surrendered, and you wonder, you want better, but you can't get better. Your name is still Abraham. Your name is still Sarai. God is trying to call you to something greater, but you won't let it go what you got. If you're here, I'm going to ask song leader to come up. You don't need to read a book. You don't. You don't need it. You don't need it. Maybe there's somebody today that needs to be baptized for remission of sin into the Lord's church. God has saved you. Anybody here that God has saved you from yourself? Huh? Anybody in here that God done saved you from yourself? Stand up right now. Anybody in here that God has literally saved you from yourself? That's the praise I'm talking about right there. Where God has literally saved you from yourself, from your mess, from your mismanagement. God stepped in and covered you from the mess that you was in. God got you out of a mess because he wanted to give you his best. He said, I'm going to bless you. Some of you, he done got you out of a mess. And if you ain't careful and don't realize and give God the thanks and the glory, guess what you'll do? You'll get out of this mess and you'll go right back to the next mess. Somebody ought to say amen right there. Some of you, somebody done got you out of a mess. God done saved you from yourself. You would not surrender and he's not going to make you surrender. But if you ain't careful, we will give our, I was so smooth. It was my this that got me. No, no. He said, I'm going to make you a great nation. I'm going to bless you. He got you out of a mess. He got you out of a mess. How many times did he get Abraham Abraham out of a mess? Now, this ain't my, this my sister. We'll talk about that later. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let me leave it alone. Be here today. The next response is two things. I need prayer. I need help. We will pray with you. We will study with you about the gospel. It's about surrender. It's about surrendering. He done got you out of a mess, gave you one more day. Gave you a new season in your life. And you got to have enough sense to know that he done got, you out of, done got you out of the mess and gave you a new season. So if you're here today, mm-hmm, if you're here today, if you're here today, we're going to sing. Somebody might need to be baptized. Somebody needs prayer. Somebody's hurting for deliverance. Somebody needs to surrender. Song leaders come. If you need prayer, you can come this way. You can fill out a card. So come on. If you're struggling in your walk, you're struggling with direction, you're struggling trying to see where God is trying to take you, God is saying, leave where you at that's comfortable. Well, Ooh, it'll, it'll preach in a minute. Amen. Because we're scared to let this go. He said, I'm going to bless you. Stuff I mentioned, I don't know nobody's situation. I'm just real preaching to the culture. That God moving. I know it ain't manly. I know it ain't man. I ain't, hey, man, you know. But hey, man, we all need some help. We all need help. We all need help. We all need help. You might not. You just pull me aside and get Brother George or get all that. Just pull us aside. Hey, hey, hey. This, the cold word is help. Yeah, I need, need you. Need. Just, 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 just. Because we'd be prideful as dudes. I ain't going to come up, man. Hey, but, hey, hey, bro, I, I need some help. Yeah. Hey, can, I, can you just pray for me? 
That's when we get real. We ain't going to ask you what you're going through. No, you, we, I need help. Because most average guy ain't going to come up here because that's our culture. Mark. We wired that way. No, no, no. Because if I'm afraid, if I tell you what I'm really struggling with, that you're going to judge me and give me the Church of Christ rundown, I don't need that. Right. Oh, come here, somebody. Right. Yeah. Amen. So for sisters, you might just say, hey, find Sister Pam or find Shanae or find Carol. I need help. Yeah. Hey, just, just grab them. And, hey, hey, can you, can you pray with me? Yes, Lord. Grab Crawford and go, hey, 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 can you? Amen. Yeah. Without you, Lord, oh, without yeah. you, Lord, you can be seen, but if you prayer, come on, I've had you stand alone. I can't help. Oh, I can't make it. You need help. Without you, Lord, I say I need help. surrender. It's about surrender. It's about surrender. Your life is going to be so much better and so much valuable through the Lord to other people. Thank you, sir. When you surrender, I'm 100% guaranteeing you it's going to be so much better. It's going to be so much better. Not just for you, but for the church. Not just for the church, but for them folk that you're around every day, all day. For your family. And we're serious. We'll be in the back or we'll be in my office. Hey, you need help. You need prayer. Need help. Need help. Help. Butch Burns says, prayer for the Burns family. Continue to let God be my guide. Uh, I desire the special prayers of the church. Delma Hayes says, I desire the special prayers of the church. Thank you for your um, prayers. Also, please continue to pray. For me and for my grandchildren and family uh, in Louisiana and Nevada, we continue to pray for your sister as well. Amen. Albert Hammond says, I need to surrender to God to serve him better. Bless you, man. Thank you for that honesty. Thank you for that honesty. Bless you, bless you. Nate Johns, special prayer for my wife. Bless you. Cheryl Campbell says, I desire the special prayers of the church. Please pray for my brother Harold for the loss of his youngest son, Robert Campbell. Special prayers for all my siblings and continue to pray for me. Mercy. And we know you're struggling with illness right now. And we're glad to see you. Bless you, bless you. Amen. 
Sanja Louise Marshall. Uh, I'm a church member. I've seen and asked for forgiveness and prayer. I desire the special prayers of the church. I desire counseling. And I want to confess faith and be baptized. Bless you, bless you. Well, we, we can definitely study with you. Raise your hand so we, we can definitely study with you right after, okay? We'll definitely study with you. We're being baptized for remission of sins and surrender and giving it all over to God. And we've got a new Bible study on our tablet that we will share with you. And uh, I'll have Sister Carol uh, to meet with us. And then we will uh, begin to disciple you because that's a part of this process, discipleship. Linda George says, I desire the special prayers of the church. Bless you. Keon Tatum says, I'm a member and I'm seeing that forgiveness and prayers. I desire the special prayers of the church. I need counseling and guidance. Albert Crawford says, I desire the special prayers of the church. Please pray for me. For Brother Casey Dampier requesting to be, uh, can be, be remembered in prayer. Other prayer requests from the stream. Earlene Valentine, pray for my sister Patricia. Prayer requests are still coming in. Mercy, mercy. Um, Earlene Valentine, pray for my sister Patricia Valentine that she gets her mobility back. And I'm going to have Charlie to come up and pray. I'm going to mention them, but I'm going to have Charlie to come and pray. I've got them all. You just pray. I've already read the names. I'm going to need you. Just come on. See right here, God will pull you through. Sometimes you need them, them veterans, them OGs, them spiritual, them veterans to pray you up. Um, Cheryl Donnell, keep me and my family in your prayers. Cheryl Donnell, just call on me, brother, when you need a hand. We all need somebody to lean on. Um, Erlene Valentine, pray for my sister Patricia Valentine that she gets her mobility back. And for George Epps and his family. Carolyn Baker, please pray for my brother, Harold Campbell in Oklahoma, for the loss of his son. Also pray for Sister, we, we reached back out to her. She reached out to us, Sister LaShonda Smith. Amen. Said she's going through a lot. She was baptized through COVID. She's trying to, she's went through horrific health situations. She has been in surgery. She's been in a coma. She's been in an assisted living facility, trying to get connected back with us. And, and, and she needs prayer and she needs some help, but just keep her in your prayer. Keep her in your prayers as well. So it was great. And I know Carol is reaching out to her. Um, Cheryl Darnell, please pray for my, please pray for the church. Pray for our forgiveness and families. And uh, mercy, mercy. We're praying for you, Sister Cheryl. Mar Marquita Washington, I surrender all to the Lord. Beverly Block, I need prayer for healing and pain on this illness. And Beverly failed at the Martin Luther King program, but she's, She's, she's trying to recover. Chris Long, I've seen and asked for forgiveness. Latanya, Sips, Latanya Simpson Dixon, I've seen and request prayers for strength and guidance for me and my, family, my entire family. And, I, and for my family, request special prayers for Lucille Jones, my son, I were both grandsons and a deep uh, friends. And a, and a dear friend, son, Marco, thank you. All right. So we will have Brother Charlie pray, and then after that, we will uh, give just some brief announcements. And, uh, and uh, so, Brother Charlie, we're going to just ask you to lift us up. Just lift us up where you are. You don't have to call every name because God knows their heart. God knows what's on them, and we just need you to just pray us up in a time like this. Let us humble ourselves. And approach the throne room of God and ask him for blessing. Yeah, yeah. Let us pray. Yeah. Our Heavenly Father, we are truly thankful. Thank you. That we have the church. Yeah. That we have with us that which Christ died to establish Mercy. in the world. Yeah. Father, we are thankful. And so many of us today haven't come to know the way. And we ask you to be with us, Father. Enable us to see the error of our ways so that we can change. We can change. We are so thankful, Father, for the messenger 
messengers that you have sent to us so that we can hear your words elementary style we're thankful Father we're thankful and we ask you to be with us and increase us we're just so thankful Father in Jesus name we ask you to be with us watch over and keep us in the hollow of thine own hand that was found on the cross of Calvary the nails that hang him there be with us Father to, and let us know that you love us and you care for us and you will cleanse us and we will not be ashamed of ourselves but walk with you. Be with us, Lord. Keep us in the hall of thine own hand is our prayer. Be with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My daddy. <laughs> he said, call us that. That's my daddy right there. Oh, bless you. Oh, bless you. A legend in the faith. So dear. So much that he has meant or still means to Roswell here. Let me give you three announcements that we're going to close. Corian, you right there. You got to say the closing prayer because you're right there. Got gotcha, you, sir. Got gotcha, you, sir. Got gotcha, you, sir. Uh, we've got about four announcements. Real quick, don't forget the women's, the women's prayer breakfast is this coming Saturday. Amen. Women's prayer breakfast this coming Saturday, the 28th, 8 a.m. to 10 women's prayer breakfast right here. We will send you the time and place for the men's breakfast. Obviously, we can't have it here, but I hear the food's going to be good here, so uh, we can't have it here, so we'll give you that information, guys. We just need to talk through some stuff some at the brothers' meeting this coming Saturday. Also, we're preparing for a uh, uh, church meeting on the 19th, so put that on your calendar, church meeting the 19th, church meeting February, 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 February. we got leadership meeting. We'll come back to that. 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 We're going to go ahead and dismiss. We're serious. If anybody needs prayer, just say, just, just, hey, help. Just Amen. wait around. We know those cues as guys. We done done that enough. Hey, Amen. We'll be in the back. We'll be in my office. And it, it ain't no shame. It ain't no shame. Man, you're trying to get through stuff. You're trying to get through stuff. You're trying to get through stuff. We're here to help you. The sisters will be on post. Sister Carol, Sister Barbara, Sister uh, Pam Harris, Sister Shanae, they'll be on post. If you need one of them just to pray with you, if you need one of them to pray with you. So we're going to go ahead and dismiss. Uh, we've got one announcement, and then Corian's going to come and uh, pray, and then we will be dismissed. We really need all of the brothers next Saturday, 9 o'clock. We need to hear from the brothers. I don't think one of the elders should really make plans for the church without your input. Next Saturday morning, nine o'clock, we're meeting at the village. Nine o'clock next Saturday morning at the village. I need to apologize. Hey, we need young men to carry it. We need Jeremiah. We need young men. Come be with us. Be prepared to move the church to rail. We need young men to be at that meeting next Saturday morning. Your input, your involvement is valuable. So please come, all brothers, next Saturday morning, 9 o'clock at the village. Uh, last Sunday, Brother Matthew stood, talked about education. We're launching February the 5th, but you know what we need? Teachers. We need teachers on every level. We need committed teachers. If you have a desire to teach, I'm going to ask for two women to stand up. There are you coordinators. Sister Davis, would you stand? Susan, 
Sister George, would you stay? Sister Davis coordinate from age first grade, one through six. We need teachers. See one of them, see Brother Matthew, or see myself. Last thing, and I apologize, Oscar Williams lost his auntie. I apologize. They're in Mississippi. They asked us to pray for them. They'll be traveling back home. Let's lift them up in prayer. Thank you. I can go get them. I can go get them. You can go. No, no, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> but, 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 yeah. Okay, so, sister, they, they point you. Sister, ah, they point at you. Your grandson, they're at you. You didn't see him? We need teachers. We need teachers. We need teachers. We, we, we just don't call it like we see it. So, uh, so who else? Who else? Who else? Yeah, we got to yeah, get a bunch of people. Lauren? 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 Yeah. Yeah. We need teachers. Let me leave it alone. I'll read it. Send me a text. Monday, Monday morning, I don't know what happened, God just blessed. We've got a truckload of meat that we don't have storage for. Cedric, we're taking some out to the parallel villa. But if you know someone that needs some meat, oh, holy. Monday after, no steaks, no steaks. But if they want to teach, we can get them steaks. Bless you. We want us to be here. Thank you for all the blessings you gave to us. Um, we're praying for traveling grace uh, for many people as they're traveling back. Um, as we start this new week, um, we're asking that you just walk with us through this new week, dear Lord. That's where all we all got struggles and we're all fighting to fix something, dear Lord. And it's something we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.